Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super cute hand sanitizer holders. Now today we're going to make this one and I'm going to do it on the Rakoma EM1010 multi-needle machine but you can still make this one on the single needle machine. Tomorrow I'll make this one on the Janome 500E single needle machine. They're pretty much assembled the same way. Obviously the applique comes a little bit different uh, steps in each one since they're different designs. But either one you can make in either machine. Now both of them come in the two different tops. So this one has a snap top to it. This one has just an eyelet top to it. So this style of a top you can make in a 4x4 hoop. This style of a top you need at least a 5x7 hoop. But both styles are included in both files and again you can make either one either on the multi needle or the single needle. So today we're going to make uh it's always backwards this one on the Rakoma. tomorrow we'll make this one on the Janome. so let's get started i don't know if you can see it or not but on this one i use crushed velvet for his hat so it's nice and fuzzy gives it a lot of texture i used a cute little christmas plaid for his mask and on this one i used a it's kind of a furry leopard print for the reindeer mask. So super cute. I love these patterns by Little Bee Designs. We can stitch them out. They're really, really simple. Her uh, hand sanitizer holders are super easy to create. So let's get started. So we're going to do the Santa sanitizer first. For this one, we're going to need two pieces of applique fabric, which is the inside of the mask and the inside of the Santa hat. So for the Santa hat, I'm going to use this crushed velvet. I found this in the remnant bin at Joann's, $2.16 for all of this, and it was 50% off of that. So a little over a dollar for all of this fabric, and this will be great for a lot of Christmas projects. So I've already prepared this one, but I wanted to show you what I do for my applique. You're going to want some heat and bond light. Don't get the ultra hold. You want the one that says light. It's generally the darker purple. They have a lighter purple that is a craft bond. Don't get that either. You want heat and bond, light, iron on adhesive. It comes in little packages like this. You can buy it off the bolt by the yard, or um, sometimes you can buy it in rolls. I know Walmart has it in rolls. Uh, you can buy it at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, any of your craft stores. Very easy to find any fabric store will have it, but you want the heat and bond light because that is safe for sewing through. So I bought this one and this one comes in a flat sheet. So all I did was cut a piece that is about the size of the fabric that I need. This is a little bit bigger than I need, but it has a kind of a rough side and a paper side. You wanna take the rough side and put it on the back side or the wrong side of your fabric. So the rough side to the wrong side of the fabric and you just put it down and then you just use a little bit of a heat or an iron. I'm using the Cricut Easy Press Mini. This works great for little projects, especially for filming because it doesn't take up a lot of space on my desk. And it doesn't take too long. I think the directions actually tell you like two seconds or something like that. So you want to let it cool down just a second before you remove this backing paper. If you peel it too soon, you'll pull that adhesive because it's still active because it's been heated. So you just want to let it cool down just a little bit and then you can remove this paper backing. And I don't know if you can see that sheen or not, but there is now a adhesive backing on the back of this. Now this isn't sticky yet until I reheat it and then this side will activate. And I've already prepared the backing on this one. So we've got our two pieces of applique ready. The other things that you're going to need are your hoop. I am using some tearaway stabilizer. Actually, I think this is cutaway. Nope, this is cutaway. Happens to be what I had. But you can use cutaway or tearaway. I'm going to be using some 505 temporary adhesive. I also am using some white vinyl. And what I like to do, if you have the software to do it, I like to open the design in the software, even though I'm not making any changes to it. But by doing that, this is the Chroma printout. It actually prints out like this. I was messing with the colors, but it'll print out on a full page. And then I just cut it down. And that tells me how big my vinyl needs to be. 
So I just use that as a guide to cut my vinyl. So that's why this one's cut out. So you're going to need two pieces of vinyl that fit over the entire thing. And then you're going to need one piece of vinyl that fits from these mark lines right here. If you can see those right there and right there, that's your pocket placement. So it needs to reach from one side to the other and cover the bottom of the design. So that's going to be my pocket place, pocket piece. <laughs> Um, the other thing I like to do in the software, if you have embroidery software, is I always like to print it out. And then I will use this um, stitch simulator and it will walk you through the steps. And I could have gone through and changed all my colors, but I didn't. I just wanted to go ahead and use it the same way you're going to get it. Um, this is a DST file, so the colors are a little bit different than they may be if you open it up, say, a PES file or something. But I kind of go through the stitch simulator and see exactly what each step is, even though it's clearly illustrated right here. I just like to go through and write my colors down and kind of write here's like where I add the backing. Here's where I'm going to add the pocket placement just to give myself a reminder when I get over to the machine. So this part is optional. You don't have to have the printout to do this. And a lot of times digitizers will include the printout with their files. So let's take this over to the Rakoma and we'll get started stitching. Okay, so we're at the Rakoma. The first thing we need to do is get our design off the flash drive and put it on the machine. So in order to do that, we're going to unlock the machine, click OK. We're going to click File. It's on the flash drive, so we're going to click the flash drive. We're going to scroll till we see our file. It's this one right here. You can see a preview of it right here. We're going to tell it to save it from here to the machine using this button right here that has a machine with an arrow. Now it's on the machine, so let's go get it off the machine. And it's usually the very last one. And there it is, we're gonna click OK. I'm gonna make sure that we have the right hoop set. So I'm gonna check that in the design set as well. I'm going to hoop, hoop number, this is my C hoop. Hit OK. I'm just going to center that up, hit Escape. So I need to rotate it. I want to turn it this way. It'll fit that way, but it's awfully close. So I'm going to go into my design set. I'm going to go to the F button and I just want to turn it sideways. I don't really care which way it is. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to click OK. So now it's just going to fit in that frame a little bit better. So we're going to hit escape. The next thing we need to do is choose our colors. I've already sewn this before, so the colors are already set but that's where you're going to use your cheat sheet and just go through each step. Box number one represents the very first stitch. Number two is your second stitch. Number three is your third stitch and so on. So that's why I kind of like to go through this prior to getting to the machine, just so that I'm sure where everything's going to, or what colors everything's going to be. Also, while you're in the color mode, you want to have your machine stop after every color because we're going to be doing a couple different appliques. So I'm going to switch this AA button, which is automatic, automatic. I'm going to click it till it says AM, which is automatic manual, which means it's going to stop after every color. And then we're going to click OK. Now you can choose your speed if you want. Mine's set on 810 stitches per minute. I'm just going to delete it. That looks great to me. So we're going to hit OK. Once your machine is locked, you're ready to trace your design. So here we are, and I'm just going to click the trace button and just make sure that I can safely trace this image. I know that I've got plenty of room, but always a good idea to stay in the habit of tracing your design. Now that it's traced, everything looks good. Now that we've got everything all set up, we're just gonna lock the machine. We have plenty of room for our design, so we are ready to hit start. So it's stitch number one, which is our placement stitch. This is the stitch that tells us where the vinyl is going to go on the design. So I have my piece of vinyl. I use some 505 temporary adhesive and lightly sprayed the back. Don't spray this near your machine. You want to keep it safe distance away. I'm just going to slide that under there. Make sure that the entire stitch is stitched down. And then I'm going to hit start.
Okay, the next stitch is our placement stitch for the mask and it's going to do the mask string. So we're gonna click start. So that serves as our placement stitch for our mask fabric. So I'm gonna take my mask fabric, I'm putting that adhesive side down and I'm going to just lay that right on top. And you can spray this with some spray adhesive if you want. I'm gonna to try to follow the angle of the design there. Just make sure the entire mask area is covered. And we're going to hit start. Now you want to remove it from the machine and carefully trim around that edge. And I'm going to hit it with the iron. So we're back over here at the desk and we're going to just trim away the excess fabric as close to that stitch line as you can get. Just make sure you don't cut into the stitch line. I really like using these applique scissors. It makes it so easy. Now this is why I put that adhesive on the back. You wanna just very carefully, don't touch the iron to your vinyl, but just go over that material really lightly and that will just tack that down so that it looks nice and flat. We're gonna put it back on the machine and go ahead and let it finish stitching until we get to our next applique piece. So this is our red placement stitch. So I'm gonna put my red fabric right over the top. And again, you can use the spray adhesive on the back if you want. And we're just gonna hit start. We're gonna remove it from the machine. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're gonna cut around it and then we're going to adhere that down and bring it back to the machine to, for the finishing stitches. So this is really furry. I'm just going to use my lint roller and get some of that fuzzy off of there so I don't stitch that down. And just take your time and make sure that you get nice close cuts so that you don't have any fabric sticking out of your finishing stitch. Okay, so we've put it back on the machine and now it's time to do our satin stitch. So we'll go ahead and hit start. Okay, once that satin stitch has stitched around the, the hat, we are going to remove it from the hoop and we are going to turn it over and apply our backing. You could also put felt if you don't want to use another piece of faux leather or if you want to use some other type of material for your backing, you can absolutely do that. 
So once you've added that, I'm just taping it down to make sure that it stays in place. Just like that. I just used some scotch tape. You could use painter's tape, whatever works for you. We're going to add it back to the hoop. And click start. That is the placement for our snap. Hit start again. Now it's going to put our pocket placement Okay, once we have it, those two pocket placements, it's time to add our pocket. So you're going to remove it from the hoop. You're going to turn it over. You're going to line your pocket up with the two lines right there and right there. And you're going to tape that into place. And then you want to carefully return it to the hoop, making sure that pocket doesn't move on the back or get messed up. Trying to load this from the side. Again, I'm just holding that pocket, making sure that that stays right in place. And we're going to hit start and finish it. All right, so the stitching is all done. Let's take it over to our desk. So you wanna go ahead and trim up any threads that you have. I'm not too worried about those pocket placement threads. You just make everything look nice and tidy. Go ahead and remove it from the hoop. If you have tearaway stabilizer, you can go ahead and, I guess I did use tearaway. You can go ahead and tear this out around the edges. Just be careful you don't rip your stitches. If you don't, if you use cutaway, just leave it in there and you can easily cut around it. And now you want to use some really sharp scissors and I highly recommend the Kai scissors. And you're just going to cut about an eighth of an inch or so around your image. Try to move the image not your scissors, and you'll get a smoother cut. Just don't go too close because then you compromise the integrity of the stitch and it could let loose on you. And you can always go back and trim more. So if you're worried about being perfect, I would cut it bigger and then go back and clean it up. So this is the cam snap system. It comes with the snaps, the application tool, the awe. And to complete a snap, you need two of the tack pieces. And then there are two different backings. You just need one of each. They're a male and a female, just like that. So you're going to need those. And then you need to decide which type of hand sanitizer you're going to be using because it'll make a little bit of difference in your um, where you place your snaps. So you can use either one. This will work for the skinny style. These are the Bath and Body Works um, hand sanitizers. You can use either one. I kind of stick to this style. I like this the way this fits better. So what I like to do is once you've put that in there, you've decided which one you want, you're going to grab your rotating lobster clasp. I'll have these linked in the description as well. And you're going to go ahead and put that on so that the snap is facing Santa Claus. All right. 
Now you're going to go ahead and put a hole right in the center, that placement hole that the design stitched for you. That's your first snap. And then what I do is put one of my snaps. So this is, we're gonna turn it over and look at the Santa side. We're gonna put the snap through the top. So it looks like that. You're gonna flip it over with this still in there, I like to just get it about where I want it, as tight as I want it, and then I'm just going to make a little hole, and that's going to tell me where to put the other snap. So I'm going to take this out. We're going to go ahead and take this tack piece, put one of our backs on it. I'm going to put this one. I'm going to put it that side up. So you're going to take your application tool. You're going to put the black side against the flat part of the tack and then squeeze. Once you've got that into place, you're gonna take your other tack and you're gonna place it inside and through that little hole that you just made with the tack or little dot that you just made. If you need to use the awe to make the hole a little bit bigger, go ahead. But I actually poked through it, so I am good. It's right there. I'm gonna put the other back on this direction Oops. So it's in that direction. And again, I'm going to place the black side against the back part of the tack. You've got enough room to get in there. And just squeeze. And that is your little Santa hand sanitizer. How cute! And look how fluffy and furry his hat turned out. I love the little plaid peeking out of the mask. Super cute. I think these are really cute. I think I'm going to put one in the mailbox for the mailman and maybe one for the Amazon driver and the UPS guy. All kinds of fun little gift ideas. Uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow if you're interested. We'll be making the reindeer who is equally cute. On this one I used a furry little leopard print and it, it turned out so cute. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up, click the subscribe button, click that bell right next to it, and you'll be notified every time there is a new video. Here are some other videos you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. See ya. Never stop making.